I'm going to pick on uh, some points that my fellow panelists have, have touched on. And, you know, I think both of them are a little bit biased because you're coming from the uh, financial institution background. But I want to argue that, um, to me, corporate governance is maybe touches to the point, uh, um, Daniel, you mentioned in your opening remarks about sustainability. It's, it, to me, it's actually a lot broader than, you know, you're doing something just so you can access money. Um, of course, that is an important uh, part of, of being able to scale up and grow up. But, you know, it's, it's really um, more important to avoid that being that statistic, Daniel, that you said, where you die in three years, or even more specifically, I mean, our company has been around 37 years, you, you, you die after 37 years. Imagine the amount of commitment, the amount of investment, the amount of sweat hours. Um, and, and therefore, for me, you know, the sustainability aspect is, is the one that by far sort of um, overacts why one should actually embrace it. And just going back to your question, um, you know, around the structures, and I think, Sarah, you touched on it well, and we had this discussion before, you know, it's a tough one around, you know, what type of um, corporate governance model does one adopt and when? This whole notion of timing. And I think, Daniel, you talked about um, cost, right? You know, cost. And I, I will argue, I'll touch on the cost first. To me, it, it's, it's how you, you, you're, you're, you're looking at, at this um, initiative. If you are looking at it from a poor or bad lens, you're going to see it as costly. But you have to think about what's the opportunity cost of not actually embracing it. You know, those issues around financing, whether it's risk mitigation, so, you know, the cost thing should be put aside. You have come into business, you go and put in money, you have insurance, you should at least, you have, you know, people in to help you. This is something that should be a plus. It, it has to be there. It, it should not even be looked at as, an, as a nice to have or a, as an option. That's how I think about it. So in terms of what's appropriate when, so you're right, when you're very small and you're starting up, Maybe you can have an advisory board, definitely external parties, definitely people who are ex, uh, you know, experts in areas that you probably don't have that knowledge, uh, most likely, because that then gives you that diversity of thought, gives you that enrichment in how you're thinking through your strategic planning and your own processes that you're putting in place. But one of the things we talked about with Sarah was you can become too comfortable with the advisory board. That's, that's what happened in my organization. We became too comfy in that place. You know, so you get stuck in, ah, I have a board, it's advisory, and it, it seems to be working, right? But the challenge is, because most of our SMEs, you know, they're going through so much so quickly. You know, when you're starting from what we call a low base, the reality is if things are going well, you're going to be growing pretty quickly. And then you now have to ask yourself, it's a whole chicken and egg dilemma. What really should come first? Do I first grow? Then I have all the money in the bank. Then I go and get all these, you know, highly achieved, accomplished people to sit on my board and, you know, hey, it looks good now. Or do I see this as something that is very important to help me actually sustainably grow my business and therefore I have it a lot earlier so that that growth path is really informed by the... And get, I get, I, you give yourself the chance to actually a, a, achieve your goal. So the chicken and egg dilemma there is probably where we were struggling on what's the right time to switch. Mm -hmm. So for sure, in my mind, um, I would be biased. I would say have the advisory board probably when you're still in the startup area and quickly, as, you, as soon as you start bringing that whole segregation, you know, duties where you have a finance manager, you've got like heads of departments for other areas and the number of employees is getting to like 10 plus I think you really need to start now forming these committees and actually bringing in experts that will really help inform the, the way you, you're really running the business. Because if you don't do it, I mean, I think about Crestform so many times, and I think had we embraced corporate governors when we were five years old, I, I, I shudder to think where we would be now. I shudder. And I can assure you we would be a lot further. I can tell you categorically. So I would argue that make the switch quickly as, and, and don't look at it as a cost. It is not a cost. The real cost is the opportunity cost of not doing it. And you know, if you really look at what you will be able to unleash in terms of potential of your opportunity, I mean, it is, it, it is something that should not be undermined. Thank you.